Greetings, Commanders. This is Commander Atlas Rand. Today, I've got a little different video for you. Instead of showing you something in the game, I want to show you something out of the game. So consider this to be the first in a series of application. I don't want to call them reviews, but probably application show and tells. Um, somewhere between a review and a tutorial. But really, I just want to show you what it does, not tell you the best way to use the application. And what you're looking at right now is an application called ED Odyssey Materials Helper. This application started simply by providing a way for you, people that are playing Odyssey to keep track of different materials they collect and to look up what materials they need to unlock certain things but it has grown a lot since then and it seems like every iteration of the game brings more updates to the application as well so what i have is the latest addition to this application on the screen and let me close this out so you can see more of it and that is showing you all the relevant information about the different powers it will show you what, at what level, what is unlocked for each power. It will show you the exploration, bounty, faction reputation, black market, whatever unique advantages the power has. It will also show you what all the powers have in common on the left here. And since it's actually tracking your log files from the game in real time, it shows right here, so you can see most of these are blue. But one of these is yellow, and that is for Leong Ru. And Leong Ru is the power that I recently got up to level 114. Or is it 118? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Over 100. Uh, and you can see that in yellow are all of the different weapons and modules that I've now unlocked through that power. Of course, you can only be in one power at a time. So if I was to, say, switch to... A sling Duval, which I would never do, but let's say I did, then this yellow would disappear back to blue since I no longer would have them unlocked. And as I slowly proceed through the levels, these would become unlocked. So this is just a, a convenient location so you don't have to look this information up in game or search for websites. It's built right into the app. Let's go to the next tab here which is engineers this tab lists all the potential engineers and you can see this character this is a fairly new character so i think maybe two months old two and a half months old so there's still a lot of engineers that i've not unlocked the ones that i have unlocked have their image displayed the ones that i have not have the little lock symbol but what is convenient here is once again in one easy place we have a list of all the different unlocks that the engineers can do. So you can look up like, oh, I want to modify shields. Who do I go to? You can just scan through this real quick and, oh, here we go. Uh, shield boosters and this one sensors. Okay, shield generator up to level five. So I need to go right here. You can click on this little double uh, double box icon, which is the becoming the universal copy icon. And it will copy the location, Trader's Rest, and um, what is that, Lusak? It'll copy it directly to your keyboard so you can paste that into the game and fly there directly. So very convenient listing of all the engineers. Now, if we open this up, you can see that if you don't know which engineer to use for something, you can actually look at the item you want to modify. So let's say, again, that we want to modify shields, where shields are going to be in optional internals. You click here, scroll down until you see the module that you want to do, shield generator. And this is level one, two, three, four, and five. So at level one, it shows you which of the engineers that I have available to me can do this. Now you can see I have three of the engineers unlocked that can work on shields, but Mel Brandon is not unlocked. He's still locked, so he's in red. 
And if I go to two or three, four or five, you can see that there are a lot fewer engineers that can work on shields to get them to five. Uh, Lei Chong is the one that I have available. Mel Brandon can also do it, but I have not unlocked Mel Brandon yet. Additionally, it tells me the materials that are going to be required to do level five. And after the last change in the game, as we all know, each level requires that many materials. So for level five, I would need five times this, five times this, and five times this. So this is an easy way out of game to look up information like that. If I was just going to level one, it just requires one distorted shield uh, cycle recording. And this number right here, the 300 here, or let's go to level five. These numbers right here, 113, 97, 200. These indicate my actual in-game levels. And the reason it can do that is because the game constantly writes log files that um, for anything you do almost in the game are updated and written for external applications like this to be able to read. So by reading the game log files in real time, as you gather more of these materials, let's say I went and got some additional military grade alloys, this would go up from 97 to 98 to 99 to 100. And I would see that in this application as I'm doing that in the game. It is very convenient. Below this, we have what does this upgrade to level five give us? It shows you when it's complete at that level, what kind of advantages we get in blue, what disadvantages we have in red. So it's very convenient and you can do that for core internals, for utility mounts, for hard points, for any of those. You also have experimental effects. So if you want to know what an experimental effect, so we were doing shields. Um, so let's see, what are experimental effects for shield generators? Well, we have double brace, fast charge, force block, high cap. So let's say we do um, low draw. So if we do low draw, here are the materials we're going to need. Here are the engineers that are capable of doing it, including the ones that we have unlocked and one that we have not unlocked. And it shows you the advantages and disadvantages. So there's the advantage for low cap is there's less power draw or low draw, sorry. Low power draw and energy per regen is higher. But all the rest of these are downsides to selecting this. And let's say if we do fast charge, so a different set of advantages and disadvantages and a different set of materials are gonna be needed. So this is very useful in the app as well. And for people that are just starting out, we have engineer unlocks. So let's find an engineer I have not. So Mel Brandon, I have not unlocked. So you can see he's not green. The green ones are the ones I've already unlocked. So we select him and we can read a description of him. And we can also find out what is necessary to unlock him. So we need to learn about reach level three and 33% reputation with Elvira Martuk, which I think we've done, gain access uh, invitation from Colonial Council. Have not done this because haven't been to Colonia on this character. Uh, initiate contact, provide 100,000 credits worth of bounty vouchers. Have not done because I haven't actually gone to Colonia to see him and he's in the Colonia. But it's a good way if you're planning to unlock an engineer to know exactly what you need to do. Same app. Additionally, synthesis. So these are all the things you can create using what you've got, uh, what materials you've collected for engineering. You can also manufacture a variety of things. Let's say you run out of limpets. Well, you can make four new limpets, it says right there, uh, inside your ship if you have none left and it will use iron and it will use nickel and it'll tell you how much it's gonna use. So very quick and easy way to look up the costs of a variety of things you can synthesize. Tech broker blueprints, uh, you know there we have tech brokers, both human and guardian tech brokers in the game. Once again, instead of actually flying to a tech broker to see what they have for sale, 
you can look it up in this app. So these are fighter blueprints from the Guardian one, from the Q11. We have a bobblehead, super useful, not. Okay, modules. Caustic sink launcher, that's pretty useful. So we can see what's required for that. Engineered FSD, good old engineered FSD. I just deleted four of those yesterday. I was so sad. I hate deleting things that actually cost me materials, but it's no longer the fastest drive. The double engineered one just does not compare to the SCO. The SCO is better. So this is what I spent on each one of these. And I had four of them. And incidentally, when you quote unquote sell these because they're engineered and they didn't cost money, they cost materials, guess how much you get back exactly zero money zero materials so you're just throwing them away essentially to free up space and that's exactly why i threw them away i needed the space and i had four of these just sitting there doing nothing i will never use them so you can look up all of these different um, both human and guarding modules and weapons what the requirements are to get them in this app so that's all the engineering portion. Now, we also have a ship editor. Let me close this up to make more room. And this actually tracks, again, what ship you're currently in, in real time. So you can see that this is a uh, Mandalay that has all the modules empty right now for weapons. And then it shows me the details of each of the modules that I have installed in the ship. Shows me the um, the thermals, how much energy it's putting out. Uh, shows me the jump range, the, the speed, in, and with speed with turbo, the price as built, how much this is going to be in credits, what the rebuy cost is, what the armor and shields are, all this information. In a lot of ways, this gives this is an alternative to using uh, Etsy, um, EDSY, which is another tool that I think most of us are used to using, uh, which is similar for this function, for sort of building a virtual configuration of your ship to test out what you want in it, what has what type of upgrade before you actually commit to spending money and resources in the game. So this has the same kind of functionality built in as well. And you can add it to a wish list and it'll tell you what materials you have still together. I guess this is showing you where the weapons are actually located on the ship, which is pretty handy as well. So this is another thing that's built into the, this app. The wish list we saw here, you can add things that you want to add. Like I want to unlock Bill Turner, Vaya Martuk, Liz Ryder. So to unlock them, I just added them to the wish list, and it adds the materials that I'm going to need to unlock them. And uh, this is sort of a combined single wish list that has all these things turned on. So when all of these are green, you can see I've got a few of these that are still in red. But when all these are in green, then I can do every single one of my unlocks. The unlocks that are in green right here mean that I have all the resources for that particular unlock already available. So, and this could be, I'm unlocking engineers here, but I'm also unlocking things like frameshift drive or guardian modules. And you can create multiple different wish lists for this. Commodities, well, I don't, uh, I don't have any commodities on me. So it's, it's showing none. <laughs> But what I do have is materials. So this is showing you all the materials that you've collected. And I did, um, you can tell, I went on the raw material hunt right before uh, PowerPlay came out. I wish I wouldn't have because PowerPlay actually provides you an awful lot of materials uh, as you get the packages from the game at each level. But you can see here, there are seven different types of raws. This shows you the levels of each one with the right side being the higher tier ones, the ones that are the, that you can then use to get the lower tiers at a trader if you want. 
And if you highlight one, it pops up a window that shows you the best place to find it, what you can downgrade it from, uh, tells you what it's actually utilized in, if, what that material is needed for. And you can see whether or not these are things you're going to plan on making in the future. And then uh, the red lines on these show you what you haven't yet uh, or how much empty space you have. So the green is how much I currently have. The red is how much available I have. So if I went to get um, the encoded materials, I have quite a bit of available red space. Guardian, even more available space. So I have very little Guardian on this character for the same reason. It's a fairly new character, only three months. So I've only gone to the Guardian sites once. On some of my older characters, these might be filled up as well. Thargoids. Well, I haven't done anything with Thargoids. So you can see I have zero Thargoid materials at, on this character whatsoever. But I have a decent uh, supply of, um, uh, what are these, manufactured materials, I think these are called. And the reason for that is, A, they're easy to get now. So I've gone to uh, actually get these in different uh, systems um, in the what do you call it? The high size something scan. You know, when you scan, you get the the high data. I can't remember. I don't want to butcher it. I can't remember. But anyway, you can get those materials. But also, just opening up packages as you level up on levels from PowerPlay also gives you more materials. So a lot of these got sort of filled up and flushed out for that reason. And then, uh, once again, Thargoid. I haven't done any Thargoid with this particular character, so there's nothing in here. So, uh, so there's a lot of stuff this application does, but there's one other thing it does, and then we can switch to on-foot mode. That was ship mode we were in. And on-foot mode is essentially a copy of ship mode, except for all the on-foot stuff in Odyssey. So this is what the, what the app actually came out. This was the main focus for the app. So you can see I've unlocked a grand total of zero on-foot engineers on this character. But it tells me what I need to do and where I need to go to unlock each of the engineers. Same thing here. This is a list of materials. You can see I have some of these. And if I have any at all, it's not because I've collected them. It's because they were part of a package that I got as I went through the over 100 levels of power play. So you can see actually that it, I probably got an average of about five or six materials across the board from doing nothing but power play and not actually landing on a single planet, which is not bad. Loadout. Uh, editor. So I'm not sure why this is not showing. I think we have to add a suit. So you, you tell it what suit you want to do. Then you can kind of play around with what uh, what type of modifications you want to add to the suit. Let's say we do an improved battery capacity. You can see what how that changes the, the suit dynamics here. Um, improved jump assist. Everybody likes improved jump assist. I don't care what kind of suit it's for. That's a good thing. And then you tell it what the target grade is. And then you can add it to your wish list. So we'll create a new wish list. So now what we just did in the simulation in the loadout editor in the suit, it just created a wish list. And these are all the materials that I need in order to build that suit as I just selected it. You can see I actually have more than I thought I would, given that I haven't gone to the planets at all on this character. But there's certainly still a number of things that I have yet to collect, which I would need to in order to upgrade the suit to be just like it is in the simulator. And then lastly is just a materials list. And this is a list of all materials, not just required for what you're doing, but across the board, all the potential materials that you can gather on foot on the planets, which is a lot. It's uh, honestly, there's a lot of junk and uh, you, you end up selling that junk. And then there's a substantial number of things that you'll actually need. And uh, it looks like just about everything that was provided by 
opening up the packages, the mini packs, and then eventually after 100, it switches to full-size packages. Um, it's been providing materials that are absolutely useful. So there's been no junk provided because I have zeros down here for a lot of the junky materials. But uh, this middle category, um, which is very useful for a lot of things, is uh, starting to fill up. So in a nutshell, that's the app. Um, I don't think there's anything too complicated in the settings that I need to tell you. I think I left mine basically on default. The one thing you will want to do is link it to your Frontier account. Uh, you do that the first time you run it. It'll ask you if you want to link it. You log into Frontier, it does link, and that allows it to synchronize with your character so that you don't have to... Um, uh, so you don't have to enter any of this information manually. So it basically reads your logs and then checks with the API that the game has for any information that are not in the logs themselves. Really good software. I, I definitely use it. I recommend you give it a shot, give it a try. And it's called the ED Odyssey Materials Helper. I will have a link to it. And uh, uh, if you want to, let me see here. Um, no, no, where'd I put it? There was a, there was a, where did I put it? I had a page already to, uh, to download it, but obviously I moved away from it. Great. <laughs> uh, well, you can, let's click on here. Okay. That goes to their discord. Um, let me, let me find the page. I'll find the page real quick and show you uh, the reason I want to show it to you because it's not very pretty. Um, so, uh, so I, you may not realize that, uh, this is the right page and, and that's why I wanted to, uh, okay. Also the title of it. ED materials helper. Um, if you do a Google search, just be ready to start getting advertising for erectile dysfunction <laughs> because when you put ED in there, that's kind of where the, uh, the search will think you're talking about. Okay. I think I found it here. So this one, there we go. Yeah. So ED Odyssey Material Helper, let me uh, make that a little, whoop. leave that there, move this, be a little bigger. There you go. So it, it is a GitHub page. Uh, it is, uh, if you're a developer, this looks totally normal to you. If you're not a developer, you're like, why is there a bunch of files? What does this do? But really all you're gonna do is go to the right side of the page here where it says releases. You're gonna click on the thing that says latest and that will show you this. You select the uh, updater, I believe. Either the updater, yeah. Um, either the MSI, so this will install it for you um, or a portable version, which is if you don't wanna install it, if you just wanna run it, like download the app and then double click on the app every time you wanna run it. The installer will do a normal Windows style installation where it'll create icons and put it into the start menu so you can get to it that way. Uh, and once you do that, you'll have this app. Every time you run the app, by default, it will check to make sure that you have the latest version. If, we, if you don't, it'll download itself and then reinstall itself to make sure that you have the latest version. But um, I highly recommend it. It's a good app. And if you like it, be sure to send the guy a donation. Got his PayPal link on here, his Discord link, and um, and it's uh, it's well worth it. And, and, and he keeps adding features. Like the last two features he added, like I said, were the uh, this power play section didn't exist until a week ago, and then before that, the section he added was actually the the ship stuff, the ship editor. So I think this I may be off, but I believe this was about six months ago. So. The app is growing and it is very useful. Give it a shot. Uh, link in the description.
Until next time.